Hello. Uh, welcome to Chit Chat with Manoj. I am Manoj Singh. Uh, hello, Adab, Namaste, uh, Sasriya Kal. Thank you for joining us this evening um, to a very interesting topic, very near and dear to all of us uh, on the panel. Um, more so uh, with Uday and Shruti. Welcome to both of you. Uh, oh, challenges of hosting uh, classical uh, music and dance programs in the Washington DC metro area. Uh, so first I'd like to introduce to you Shruti. Shruti Mukund is a CEO of IDEA, which is Indian Dance Educators Association. She's directed at Only Theatre for Marketing and Communication and have been teaching Indian classic and dances for many years in this area. Many of you know her and has performed at the Embassy of India, Gandhi Center, Wool Trap, and many more venues. Welcome, Shruti. Then Dr. Oday Kamath, um, host of the DC Indian Classical Music Circle. A lot of people in this area know him. Oday is the Chief Analytic Analytics Officer at Smarsh, drives AI initiatives and analytical advancements. He has contributed to research published in journals, authors, books, and holds multiple patents. With a deep passion for music, he has managed the DC music scene for two decades. Hosting talented artists from India and the US, Dr. Kamath is an accomplished Urdu poet as well, known for his ghazals, nazams, rubiais, uh, sung by renowned ghazal and classical singers. Additionally, he is an avid music researcher foc focusing on ch 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 chand or rhythm patterns. I hope I've not misspelled something. No Pronunciation wise. No worries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Manojji, for having me. So welcome, Oday. And, and you both have been hosting uh, dance and music programs for a long time. I, uh, be, I just started. And... Uh, wanted to have this discussion, important discussion. Uh, so questions to both of you. What are some of the programs you had uh, hosted last year and are planning to host uh, this year in 2024? Shruti? So um, idea is actually, this year is our 30th uh, year in existence. An idea was formed to bring together dancers in the D, uh, DMB and classical dancers. And uh, it started as a service organization, but also as an advo advocacy organization. So a lot of the programs that we do is to support classical Indian dance in the area. We, um, you know, get them nonprofit rates. We get them, uh, get our members, you know, uh, insurance benefits because if they want to rent a rehearsal space or a, a performing arts space they need insurance so it's we we are an umbrella organization that ha covers all that for our members and so as of now we have 65 over 65 members and about uh three three to three to three uh under four thousand indian americans learning indian classical dance starting from baltimore all the way to richmond that's the larger DMB area that we serve. So the programs that we as IDEA do last year, we hosted a Abhinaya series at the Gandhi Memorial Center where our members came and explored different uh, themes in the Abhinaya uh, sphere uh, because dance is made of Britta and Abhinaya and most dance items have both. But there are all these beautiful poetic pieces that have been written in all languages that uh, focus only on the storytelling or the emoting or the bhava or the abhinaya. So we focused on that. We did a five month series at the Gandhi Memorial Center with that. And then we um, also uh, created different uh, other um, pro programs. We got to perform at the Millennium Stage. Um, so we, we did many things last year with the performing aspect, but we also, um, I, I forget the number, but it was more than um, like almost about 100 Indian classical performances happened in the DMB that IDEA supported last year. They rented uh, spaces in Fairfax County, Baltimore County, Maryland, uh, you know, Montgomery County in Virginia. All those programs were supported by IDEA in the terms of insurance and stuff. So there are multiple ways we are present 
in the Indian dance community in the area. So this year being our 30th year, our goal is to um, actually do a fundraiser to create an endowment to help uh, young dancers who want to become professionals. So being our 30th year, so that's what, where we're focusing our direction, uh, uh, fo focusing this year. Mm, very nice. Um, Ode? Uh, uh, from DC Indian Music Circle, we are a group of volunteers who try to help uh, various organizations. There are many organizations in DC area uh, who uh, get the artist and uh, organize various classical musicians. Uh, there is Nadrang, there is Global Performing Arts, there is Anand Bhairavi, there is District of Raga, uh, and many, many of them, including DC South Asian Film Festival and DC Music Festival. And what I do is try to help and coordinate between the artists, whether they are in India or in US, uh, help with logistics, uh, help with transportation, and anything I can do to so, uh, along with few of the volunteers to support the music. Mainly when there are no other takers from any of these organizations and uh, uh, the artists are of great caliber and uh, people want to have them, then I kind of like uh, join hands and try to organize it uh, at someone's house or at a community center or uh, at, at certain places like writers. Uh, <clears throat> writer center so basically uh, last year we had like amazing range of classical musicians uh, grade a uh, that you yourself know uh, manoji you got like uh, amjad ali khan saab and uh, uh, many others like uh, anubrat then we could uh, have uh, also like his sons and anubrat ishan and also um, we could have like uh, maestros like uh, Anindo Da and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Nath Ji. We had like uh, various others through Nadrang, uh, like uh, Nayanda and uh, Ishan Ghosh playing uh, sitar and uh, tabla. So there were many concerts and then many concerts were at basement level uh, concerts, very intimate by uh, uh, some of like uh, very kind of like fresh amateurs turning into professionals, some like very experienced coming from India for first time or their 10th time. And we had to do at the basement level, but uh, we had like big range around 35, 40 concerts last year. Wow, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah, I, uh, for my, it was my first experience last year for the DC South Asian Arts Counseling. We hosted a music festival for two and a half days, uh, opened by Ustad Mestro Amjad Ali Khan Saab, and, and also the closing was by um, Grammy winning artist Falu Shah. And uh, had a very good lessons learned. Um, so um, the next question would be, what has been your experience promoting classical dance and uh, and, and music programs uh, over the years? Do you see any trend, uh, Shruti, uh, starting with you or over there? So actually, what I want to clarify a little bit. So you get... Uh, the when Uday was talking about, was about, uh, uh, about presenting so it's about presenting see our India, uh, ideas focus is to present the next generation dancers in the US so we don't uh, present or produce any shows that we used to many years ago, but right now we have so much talent in the DMB that we are focusing on presenting only the second generation dancers who, who are already here, right? So the big uh, organizations like the Kennedy Center invite um, Malavika Sarukai or, you know, whoever uh, to come and be joining. So they are all being presented by all the other organizations. And part of our challenges is to have organizations like this to recognize that in fact, right now, 
um, there are dance schools that have been learning running for 40 years in America. And so you can imagine they're already third generation of dancers in these schools. But all these big organizations would be like, oh no, we want authentic dancers from India. So they're taking away the, the work and hard work of teachers and students in the US. So my challenge always is to advocate for them and say, look, we have these great performers here. And all these young dancers are being, you know, uh, getting grants, working with dance plays, working with, you know, things. And then they'll invite them only for the local commissioning, um, the local commissioning dance project at the Kennedy Center, but they will not give them the big space. Or they'll invite dance companies like Ragamala who have like national, uh, you know, uh, recognition. But they have national recognition because they come from Minnesota and their state is investing in them. Here in Montgomery County itself, we have 50 dance schools. Then you take it to the DMV, like 65. Then what are you going to do? You're, you know, that, that's been our biggest challenge. Mm. And so, and each of these dance schools, like I was telling you, we started as a collaborative organization because the founder members wanted to come together. So there were Odyssey dancers, Qatar dancers, Bhartanatyam, Moini Atam, all of them. And they were like, we don't know where to go. How do we do do this so they got together but now each dance school has 7500 200 students so it's the trend is it's showing you the growing population of the indian community in our area and you can just by the number of dance school and how many kids are in each dance school i can wager and tell you which area has the most number of indians indians mm. or indian americans in our dmb yeah. Right. And so then yeah. for these kids, what's the motivation to continue to dance? Because they all end up in college. They'll go to the Bhangra. They'll go to Antras. A lot of them end up in like uh, dance uh, uh, competitive groups, Indian classical dance competitive groups. But what then? Yeah. So one of the things that I'm noticing, of course, we, will, we want our uh, heritage, our culture to pass on to the next generation. And, and a lot of kids are focused on that. Parent, and, and a lot of credit goes to parents. They make sure they are in Hindi lesson or taking classical dance or music, uh, tabla lessons and all of that. But have we succeeded in, in uh, crossing that boundary and making it more appealing to the non-South Asians. Because see, in end of the day, we our goal is also to be an ambassador of South Asia. So that the other people in this country appreciate. Uh, and uh, uh, there's more harmony between the different communities. Um, uh, they come to our events. Uh, I, I see a little bit of challenge over there. So have you succeeded in your dance schools that uh, there are more and more students are now non-South Asians? That, see, the thing about non-South Asian students that isn't going to happen for a very long time because all our, especially dance, at least music, you can, uh, you're dancing and saying, my Lord is Ganesha or Rama is my only truth. So those kind of things you have to resonate with. So even in India, you have maybe a, such a small percentage of non-Indians coming and learning. So that way, then more non-Indians who might learn Kathak, but Odissi, Bhartanatyam and Kuchipudi and all that, are, the storytelling aspect of it is so overwhelmingly Hindu focused that we do secular, dance, secular themes or we do themes that are not necessarily Hindu, but more like, you know, Kalidasa stories or, you know, something like that, that it appeals to more people who are not limited by having to know who that God was or what that story was. Or there's no, we, we, when you present, you have, to, you have to present without having the assumption that person knows the story. And to be honest, it's not even the non-Indians, even the second generation Indians or even, um, you know, we have the part of our education of dance is to culturally educate these children their source of ramayana mahabharata ganesha all that happen in dance class some kids who go to chinmaya get a different type of education right but other kids if you're a nuclear family how much are the parents what all can the parents do right 
in the yes. us they're working full time the kids are busy they're doing five different activities so the hindu part of the story or the cultural part of the thing is coming in dance class so when that is happening like we have actually the trend the other trend we've seen is that we are getting a lot of kids whose one parent is american one parent is indian that is where we are getting more uh thing to get for non indians to really want to learn this art form it's it's hard they have to really want to connect to our culture our stories to come and uh, steep themselves in our culture but yeah, when we're per performing there's a lot more that's happening right like uh, actually the i keep saying ragamala but they have mastered the art of communicating the dance to a very very um basic level they do very traditional dancing but they have learned to communicate it so well that other people are wanting to learn more about it so i think for us it's not about diluting our dance or changing our themes it's about communication that is the key to get different audiences to come Thanks, Shruti. Oh, there. What about you in music arena? Uh -huh. I mean, like uh, we have discussed this, and uh, as you know, like I see similar but yet different challenges uh, in music. First, I feel that there is niche crowd for pure Indian, Hindustani, or Carnatic classical music. Uh, uh, as Shruti was saying, that that's the common thing. Then there are like. Uh, other problems uh, or challenges uh, as i would say like first i feel there is gravitation towards top names uh, as shruti was saying that people feel it's authentic if only uh, ustad zakir hussain plays tabla or uh, amjad ali khan sab uh, plays sarod uh, uh, but uh, if or kaushiki plays uh, is in the vocal if there if there are these top names uh, they are amazing artists they are legends you can see 500 800 people joining in but if it is like uh, an amazing artist who's uh, been doing it for 25 years almost reaching that level people don't want to just come and join that program um, that that is one gravitation towards top name uh there is regionalism uh, as we know uh it's unfortunate but it is true uh hindustani music uh mu lovers don't attend carnatic carnatic people seldomly don't attend hindustani and then there is uh, uh regionalism in us too right like dmv area has these pockets uh there are marylanders there are very few uh, there are exceptionally few people uh, like you and many others who help and uh, come to other uh, concerts yes. whenever possible but as you know like hardly i see like five or 10 uh, marylanders coming to northern virginia or like very few northern virginia people going to maryland or to show the support uh, um th that is a challenge then there are multiple groups and communities right like uh, we have uh, insular communities in this indian diaspora and uh, there are and they are all good for promoting their particular uh, region or their particular language or their particular culture and that has created these deep pockets and generally people tend to be busy in those uh, activities or just promote them rather than going going across uh, and there are certain challenges from india too like uh, there are expectation mismanagement uh, for me like there are indian artists who sometimes feel that they are at a level that uh, they can't play at a basement or uh, in a small concert but to get that audience uh, uh, or to pay them the remuneration or honorarium at that level it's a huge economic challenge for the one who's uh, uh, managing it uh, so that that's another uh, i'm being very candid uh, uh, across all my points 
and finally there are other accessibility uh, issues uh, there are like most people who are into classical music are generally older audiences and they have travel constraints they have uh, issues reaching the uh, venue and uh, have transportations taken care of or they have to be back before certain time and not everyone thinks about that uh, and that creates another challenge so there are sequences of these uh, challenges as you know i mean uh, see some things are in common and and first of all the biggest challenge for us in classical uh, is that we are all already have a very niche small audience uh, because our society in general is start struck, like you mentioned. If it's a big name coming, and then they show up, uh, Shriya Goshal, Arijit Singh, some commercial singer, uh, they will fill up a 2000 capacity hall. But when there is a classical singer, uh, already the market reduces. And, and but some, I would say, have done well, uh, like uh, who've crossed this uh, hill, and and you mentioned Zakir Hussain and uh, you know Anuksha Shankar, but they have been doing a lot of fusion lately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They are they are integrating or synchronizing with the Western music, uh, and that's how their name became bigger. I mean, it was all started by Ravi Shankar. Ravi Shankar because yeah. of the Beatles suddenly exploded uh, classical Indian music. Um, so. Is, have we, have we, what do you think about fusion in, in dance or even in music? Is that something which we should do to cross, bring in more non-South Asians into our uh, our performances? Is that, sometimes, yeah. let me tell you, first time when Anusha Shankar came, I remember with her dad a, a while back at Stratmore. I remember the first half was with her father and the ne next half was fusion. I came out confused. It was confusion. I mean, but now I just went recently to two of her concerts, one at Kennedy and one at Wolf Trap. And she has come a long way. It was superb, excellent. The whole synchronization and integration with the with the with the Western musician was amazing. It it's it's it was sounding. I mean, I'm not a big music guru, but you, I felt good. It felt good. I, it, I could hear it for hours. I think uh, what we're talking about is a universal problem. I don't think it's only Indian. I don't think it's only classical. I think right now, if because I work at uh, Olni and I work in audience development, right? I do community engagement. And we're building audiences for the next generation. Even there, it's the same problem. The boomers are, uh, the boomers are aging out. So that's who the core audiences are, right? They're the ones with the, with the endowments, with the, the attendance. Mm -hmm. It's that generation. So now, how do we bridge the next generation? Except while we're all trying to layer this art on them, we are fighting something where they're getting every 30, 10 seconds, they're getting some new content on this. That is the biggest challenge. So now all these artists who have done the crossover lead to the next generation or to the non-Indians are people who have made it on TikTok, who have made it on Instagram, who are, made, who are speaking to this next generation audience. Like Anushka's sound is better because people are demanding that of her. What she did 20 years ago will not fly now. Right, because they've seen even the audiences. Like you know, do you know that Abby V, that uh, uh, guy who started with that Canadian, yeah. Canadian, yeah, yeah. So he knows how to speak to the young audiences. Then you have Sid Sridham. You have, uh, you know, um, all these, you know, those um, Nandi sisters, uh, Nandi sisters. They uh, they do all these mandolin and things like that. So there's so much content online with next generation singers who are learning how to mash up, how to fuse right, how to do it. That because there's so much immediate reaction from the audience, their art is getting better. But the next question is because they're so good in this 30 second content, 
are they really performance concert artists? We don't know that, right? Unless they are getting those opportunities. But then is that something you want to see in a concert? Do we have audience for it to actually sit down for two hours and listen to that? So the other day I went to this concert here, this girl, her name is Apurva Krishna. She um, she actually came to Berkeley School of Music and she's been creating her own. She does classical Carnatic uh, violin. Three hour concert. Everybody was sitting and watching. And this was not a big fancy auditorium. This is the Ram Seva Mandali right by my house. And there were kids, there were adults, all sitting. But it was accessible. It was right by their house. It was on Monday, the day that was a holiday. People came there. Nobody said, oh, what is this time? I mean, some people had to leave and leave. But because it was right there in the neighborhood, people sat. Like they were saying, there's the challenges of getting to places. That's the other thing we have to face. You do a program in Virginia, the Marylanders won't come. You do in Maryland, the Virginia won't come. So we have all those restrictions, right? Yeah, it's the inflation and uh, they take into consideration other issues. And another re thing is that our calendars are very full. I mean, I try my best to schedule a uh, film festival literary or anything thinking that, you know, some other conflict might not happen. But by when you come closer to the, your event, you find out there are five other things going on, on on the same day or a Friday or Sunday. And how do you avoid these? Uh, so my question to you is, uh, and, and in your own dance domain or music domain, is there a way uh, that we can consolidate some of these, uh, work with the dance schools, work with the music schools and say, hey, guys, you're cutting each other's, you know, yeah. uh, there's so much competition and cutting each other's throat. Rather, just come together and let's do a much one beautiful big event together, you know, and, and maybe less events so that uh, people will appreciate it more and then they will come to it because they will feel it more important and more well done. And, and uh, is, is that a possibility? Uh I'll say from my side, like what I have been doing for 20 years is the base that is ma managing a single calendar for all musical, uh, uh, all musical concerts in this area. So I have like now around 1,200 members and they are, as I said, like across the area who like different classical music and in, at any given point, say like 100 of them attend any of the concert. By having a single calendar and making sure that I ask them, uh, they send it to me uh, at least before they send it to everyone or they ask me if there is some uh, conflict on this day, I can actually say that, oh, uh, there is this concert on this day. There is another concert this day. So it may not work because the audiences are exactly same and stuff like that. So I have been able to do that to a level that uh, there is this single uh, uh, record or single place where all things go. The second thing is very difficult. Uh, each particular uh, group has its own mission, has its own vision, has its own uh, uh, kind of like objectives on why they have set up and stuff like that. And as you, you did it last time, it is possible to have a yearly classical concert, musical concert or classical dance or however we want to do it and have all of them participate, sending their students, uh, helping in logistics and uh, promoting some amazing artists across. That is possible in my view, but uh, uh, for once a year or something like that, but uh, not all the concerts, but at least once a year for some big festival. So for the dance per thing actually that's how idea started it was to have one single calendar but like i mentioned there's so many dance schools and that are not even necessarily part of idea so there are two comp competing things right one local dance school performances so if each school has 100 some students they're doing their own annual day they don't care which they're only going to do a day they get the auditorium 
they don't care about any other competing because their audience are their ingrown parents then the second is what the the um, mainstream uh, big audit uh, performing art houses present that's another calendar level then there's also the other calendar where people here are producing shows so it the goal though it idea is still to try um we've actually applied for a grant to create a better back end of our website where we can have people submit their own uh, perf uh, performances uh, calendar listing so we can have it all cohesively in one place so that's still the goal but having people but still even if i tell them look malvika saruka is performing in the kennedy center it makes no difference because for them their audience is so separate that they're like okay i'm going to invite my parents why are you worried if i host a show today no one is thinking about the collective they are running a school it's their business they want to present a show so that becomes a big challenge no one is interested in changing anything they'd like to and even with these annual days what happens is so many that's when you get an auditorium that weekend everyone is doing it on the same weekend so we share video links with each other that's what ends up happening <laughs> but yeah. you have to put me on your uh, mailing list i'd like to be on it <laughs> okay absolutely yeah I so uh, you know um well one scenario is to continue doing what we are doing um you know same path happy with uh with uh, performing in the basements uh, uh and with a maybe 30 40 person crowd um or the the discussion here is how do we what are some of the ways we can change or or if we want to do something different then how do we achieve it uh so i know i heard a few options um what do you guys think? I mean, uh, is there any other way we can uh, uh, we can reach out? And uh, one of the things I'll tell you, very interesting. Uh, so I was in this uh, dinner party at someone's house and they remembered Amjad Ali Khan's uh, concert we did at Wheaton School. And, you know, guess what he told me? He came up to me and said, such a big artist. And why didn't you do it at uh, Kennedy Center? So people are will same artists, same music, but they will go to Kennedy Center. Then yep. they will pay twenty five dollar parking, get a fifteen dollar uh, glass of wine, five dollar one samosa. But they are happy with that because they can say that we went to Kennedy Center to listen to Amjad Ali Khan. So there is a lot of image issue going on. Yeah, yeah. and uh, even the artists themselves, they yep. think it's. So they want everybody wants the big name and we're trying to tell them that renting the Kennedy Center at 10,000 is not worth your or my dime I'd rather give you more than and present you at JCC than there right but it's yeah. this uh, status thing image okay. image and perspectives and all of that yeah um, I mean none of these uh, venues first of all availability is an issue you okay. need almost a year in advance and a big deposit uh, Kennedy Center, you're a little bit on the safer side with a big name because they have a huge membership and they show up. They get heavy discounts. Uh, they have a big marketing machine behind their uh, yeah. the whole operation. Uh, but, you know, having it uh, otherwise, it's, it's not easy. I mean, I'll tell you on two and a half days of music festival, it, if it wasn't for Amjad Ali Khan, we were in deep trouble financially because with the local artists and even Fallu Shah, who's a Grammy-winning artist, uh, like I said, first there and there are multiple reasons we just discussed. Calendars are full. Uh, competition among our own uh, society domains, even in dance, music, lot going on. So, so what what would you recommend? I mean, what what should we do? Uh, to, uh, which is a something creative something new you you have a good good experience at only shruti i mean you did this indian play it was very successful it won an even an award actually um i think this uh, idea of curated lists and then building on those curated lists is one way to go like you know ha see even as they mentioned he has thousand some people on that list so you, he gets about 10% uh, attendance rate right so even on uh, the idea list we send it out to so many people but 
or get anywhere to five to ten percent attendance rate if that's the goal. But how to multiply that at a larger level and more Indian level? We need a lot more uh, marketing machinery, lot more digital marketing, lot more uh, ability to get the word out. Yeah, so actually, right now the uh, New York Washington Post has become national. The uh, and they all have paywalls, right? The Post as well as the New York Times. So how do we get some like we we have to meet like the like collectively meet the DCS folks because they're the super local people, no? So then say, hey, look, we have a robust performing arts Indian performing arts calendar. How do we get on DCS? How do we get on these local, you know, influencers who are talking about the arts? So there's specific people who do DMB theater, DMB, what, you know, things. So how do we get on, get uh, to uh, get them to show us, spotlight our stuff? But they can't do it for every show. So it has to be very selective when we start because our, if they start doing our Indian calendar, then they can do every weekend, it'll be only Indian stuff. So we have to, so it, uh, it, it's worth thinking through, do we then invite them, get the embassy involved and say, hey, let we want to host an event here and say, we want to bring in all the influencers. So that's what we did. And that's how actually Wolf Trap and uh, uh, Black Rock and all that, in fact, perform, uh, presented Indian classical dance in 2016. They started presenting local performers because we did this event at the uh, embassy and invited all these folks and said, hey, we're here. We're, we're, you don't have to go to India. You don't have to pay for their travel. We're here. We're doing this work. Come see the work we do. Come meet us. So I think it's maybe it's time to invite, because, you know, just that the embassy, because we're local in D.C. and it has a little, you know, glam feature to it, in, uh, get them to, you know, host an event for us, invite all these folks and say, come, see what we do. And then, put them on our mailing list and have them start interacting because the New York Times also, um, their arts person, they used to be, I forget her name, uh, Kaufman, somebody Kaufman. And then um, there's Peter Marks who used to do theater and dance. So he's also left the New York Times. So those reviewers are all gone. So how do we still keep the attention is what we should be thinking about. Yeah. Or you want to have... Uh... Yeah, I think we touched some of the things we, the artists can do and people can do is first collaboration, uh, uh, collaboration with Western classical contemporary musicians can serve as that bridge uh, um, and get new audiences uh, through joint concerts, fusion projects and stuff like that. Uh, funding is, I think, like a very important element to all of this like making sure there are funding sources there are sponsorships there are grants there is community funding making everyone aware of that uh, can help from financial aspects uh, I feel like cons uh, concerts will happen but having festivals uh, like what you did uh, Manoj ji uh, makes a lot of sense having these music festivals that showcases local talents as well as like gets uh, uh, artists which who are top artists and like uh, not so top names can actually showcase different aspects of uh, Indian music or dance and collaboration with various local cultural organization can help in uh, promoting uh, media, as Shruti mentioned, is very important, like making sure that uh, uh, the journalists, the influencers, uh, they start writing about it uh, on their Instagrams or Facebooks. Uh, uh, and there are online blogs to raise awareness and interest. And uh, as Shruti has been doing, like focusing on youth, right, like, if we start targeting younger generation through music uh, in, in like they do in India school or having that interactive di digital content, it helps in creating that long-term audience space. Yes. I think uh, even our, my own kids tell me that you should not just post on Instagram and TikTok and all of that just prior to the event. 
You should be doing that year round. Get get the tempo going. Keep posting yep. something. Keep yep. following the artists who came or the filmmakers who came. So I'm I'm actually looking for a a nice maybe a student, a social media guru or or an influencer. I'm even willing to pay a few, you know, uh, uh, some something per hour or something. But I need one. If you guys know someone, just send me a note. Uh, coming back to Shruti about, so we were very lucky in music festival. I, and I don't know how they got the buzz, but WTOP gave us a slot. Uh, NBC4 uh, came to us and, uh, and and talked about our music festival. See, all of this helps before the festival. Now, TV Asia has been with us for a long time. They cover all our events. They've uh, been very good supporters. They are media partners. But then they record the event and broadcast after the event, which is also nice that the word spreads. And then I was also surprised during one of the performances, Alif Lala's, I think, ABC News came and took some clippings and, and talked about it. So, but these are very expensive. Every day we, you know, try to balance our budget. If going on Washington, Washington Post calendar is free, but going on 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 there on a on a print for a small even an ad is very expensive, and they tell you that one ad is not going to do anything. You have to do at least three four times. Repeat. No, I think the key is to have a publicist. Like, and again, when I say publicist, it's not just for the DC South Asian Arts Council. It's a publicist for Indian collective Indian arts. Uh, representation because then what happens is there's a collective voice so we can say hey here are the top five events that's happening in our area that we want to pitch to the uh, newspapers so the see the post with the ad is different from if they feature us right there's a profile written about the organization or there's a profile written about the artists coming that's what we need to leverage and that's what all the other arts organization does it's not just the ads they place but you know there was there's a feature about um you know when we did the nice indian boy there was this whole feature about uh zaya ali khan the director or you know about the actor like you know things like that right so how do we get the buzz about something that's happening during the show but going back to the festival actually what i wanted to say is that so in the dc area we don't have one single um, like a name brand for a festival. I mean, DC South Asian Arts Council does the film festival, does the music festival, but then it happens at different times. So I think like the Indo, like, you know, the Indo-American Arts Council in uh, uh, New York, that it is in Border Festival. In, it's a multidisciplinary festival. So like that, there are others that happen, right? So I think combining all the art forms, doing, I, I think I already was telling you this, Manoj, that bringing all the audiences together and having them at the same place will having this crossover between the literary. So you, you've individually grown these audiences, but bringing them all together on one weekend, I think will be far more impactful because then you're getting them to see something they wouldn't have ever seen before because they're already here, already at the location. So they finish their literary thing, they see a so you know things so they can go and that way we slowly develop this interdisciplinary audience and also bring uh, make it more impactful in terms of time understanding we have limited uh, attention and time i think so that speaking of that shruti uh, let me tell you about 2024 so we had our lessons learned and it was reinventing the way every time you do an event, uh, a fe separate festival, you go through the same steps of planning. You know, I mean, so it was quite redundant and quite taxing for our small resources and core team. So yes, in September, we are combining all of that. So we'll start on a weekend and end on another weekend. And we're combining music, literary, dance, and film festival for those seven, eight days. So we'll bring in different artists, different programming. You attend what you want, and we call it South Asian Festival. 
So we are thinking in those terms. Uh, you just gave uh, went into exactly what we are planning to do this year and, and 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 experiment and see what happens. Because I don't know whether you guys attended the Kennedy Center, which they had two weeks of India Festival. That was so beautifully planned. Of course, very expensive affair because they brought all the artists and all from India and, and Dashid and Shah and all of the big names you can imagine. Um, and but we don't have that kind of budget but even with local artists and maybe sprinkle in with few good names big names so if they come for them they'll watch other things there will be book discussions there will be dance performance and 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 so forth and and on and music will bring in some more so i'll i'll talk offline of course with both of you to to schedule all those it takes time even the artists should be available and and all of that and the venues Oday, you wanted to say something? You're on mute. No, no, no. I was completely agreeing with the, what you were saying. And th that I think is, that will hold, that would be interesting to see. And uh, as Shruti was saying, like, I feel that having these uh, uh, audiences going to each other will increase the level of audience and awareness uh, in the community. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's already time check 946. Thank you both for joining the call today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I don't see any questions. Um, so we came up with some good ideas and and uh, and I, I hope uh, you continue to do what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's I personally feel it's of great value um, uh, that we are carrying on the flag, the culture, the heritage uh, of our South Asian music because new and new things are coming. I mean, the language is changing every day. The, the art is changing. And this, uh, given what's going on in the world right now with the wars and, and so much polarization, it's very important that uh, we are the ambassadors for, for carrying on the art and culture and bringing in peace and harmony in our society. This brings people together. They see what's in common and appreciate each other's existence. And uh, uh, hopefully I, I'm wishing for a lot of peace in 2024. Hopefully there will be ceasefires and and it's, uh, madness will come to end. So any last minute thoughts you want to say before we close? Best wishes for uh, 2024 and uh, hope all of our concerts and uh both from classical music, dance, uh, literature, all find success and the festival is like, uh, uh, becomes a huge success too. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Looking forward to more intergenerational intergener collaboration and audiences in 2024. <laughs> Thank you to both of you for joining today. Shruti joined from India. Really appreciate it. Have a safe stay and journey back home and uh, thank you there keep well and say stay safe um like i said always on my chit chat with manoj uh, life is short have no regrets and keep take good care of yourself thank you namaste and uh good night bye